Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Today's video will be about collagen and how to boost it and how to prevent loss of collagen. Collagen is a very important protein in our body. It's found in many organs, in our joints, our skin, hair, and nails. It's a fairly large protein, it's a triple helix, and it's primarily found in our skin in the second layer of skin called the dermis. In the dermis, underneath the epidermis, you have fibroblasts that can make collagen. And when you lose collagen, you start to get thinner skin, saggy skin, wrinkled skin. So how do we prevent the loss of this or even help preserve our stores? I even mentioned a little bit about collagen supplements towards the end of the video. So let's go through a routine where you can help preserve your collagen. You know, in your teenage years, definitely wear sunscreen. If you're a parent, apply sunscreen onto your kids. I recommend sunscreen use from age six months and up. Reapply every two hours when you're outdoors. If you're indoors by window glass, UVA does come through the window glass, or if you're in a car, UVA also goes through your side windows, not so much your, your windshield, but your side window, and can cause photo aging and skin cancer. UVA and UVB both contribute to skin cancer. And hitting your skin, you can get solar elastotic changes, solar elastosis, where you start to get these changes in the dermis that look kind of bad, it's not healthy. A tan is never healthy. You're gonna get decrease in collagen. Your collagen is gonna get chewed up by these metalloproteinases, these enzymes that will eat up your collagen in response to UV radiation. And then you're gonna have saggier skin and you're gonna think back, I should have wore sunscreen. So for those of you in your teenage years, wear sunscreen for sure. That's something I wish I did more in my teens. Now in your 20s, the fun stuff you can add on to help preserve your collagen. Number one being a retinoid. You can do this at night. I love retinoids. I talk about them a lot on all my channels on Instagram, TikTok, and here. Retinoids are vitamin A derived creams or serums that you can apply daytime or nighttime. I like to make it simple and apply all retinoids at bedtime. There are some formulations that are stable in the sunlight and can be used during the day, but I just like to use it at night because I like to free up space for my vitamin C serum. I don't like to layer or mix vitamin C with a retinoid. So do your retinoid at night, pea size amount, small amount to cover your face. You could treat your neck, but be careful because that can cause uh, a rash more readily on your neck. So be careful. Um, but if you can do it every other night to nightly on your face, big plus. Vitamin A derived creams will help with the second layer of skin, help thicken it up. There's a myth out there saying retinoids thin out your skin. What it can do is peel off the top layer of skin, the very top layer of skin called the stratum corneum. That's a dead layer of skin that you can peel away. By peeling that away, that's all wrinkled and dead, you're gonna help turn over your skin and tell your skin to make new skin. And it's gonna actually thicken up your epidermis. It's gonna tell your keratinocytes to make more epidermis. So thicken up the, the um, first layer of skin overall, and also thicken up your second layer of skin, the dermis, which is very important because when that gets, like we said, when that gets thinned out, you start to get sagging, more wrinkles. You don't get that nice balance and elasticity in your face because you have less elastic fibers. So retinoids are magic. They help with your pores, keep them clean. So therefore it helps with acne. It helps with fine lines and wrinkles from obvious reasons we just talked about. It also helps with dark spots. It helps with cell turnover and lighten up those dark spots you may have gotten from the sun. So I've been able to do that with long-term retinoid use. So use a pea size amount to your entire face. Do not use this product though if you're breastfeeding or pregnant. Um, I can talk about later other options you can consider if you're pregnant to help with fine lines and wrinkles, but there aren't many options. Because vitamin C is fine, but retinoids you wanna avoid when you're pregnant, okay? Here I have Neutrogena's Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream. I've talked about this in the past, and I like this one. Uh, just a small amount is all you need. This is the fragrance version here, so I just take a small amount, break it up into two, dab small little dots in your face, and then connect the dots. Do this after you cleanse. Don't do it on damp skin because it will increase absorption of it and cause more irritation. The most common side effect of using a retinoid cream is redness, peeling, dry, irritated, inflamed skin. So you wanna apply it on clean skin, but not when it's just been freshly cleansed and you don't want it to increase absorption more than it needs to and cause that irritation. 
that goes on very nicely. Then you can follow up with a moisturizer. I can, you know, a, a basic moisturizer like Vanna Cream, daily facial moisturizer. This is fine to put on right over it. You could let it sit for, you know, a few minutes before applying um, your moisturizer. You especially want to moisturize around the, the cheekbones and around the mouth, because when people peel, it's usually around the mouth or around the cheekbones area. But yeah, this is something you could consider affordable moisturizer that goes well with retinoids. Then you go to sleep. Very simple nighttime routine. Now let's talk about going to bed. Going to bed, you know, there are different pillowcase options. I've talked about a few on this channel. I like silk pillowcases because it's less frictional trauma to your face. Have an abrasive cloth surface on your face while you're sleeping. If you're a side sleeper, you can really cause sleep wrinkles. And sleep wrinkles we've talked about on this channel before. It's usually perpendicular to your smile lines. So you can get vertical lines a lot of times on your face from lying on your face and getting smushed from the pillow. Other nice things you can consider would be beauty pillows. And I've talked about um, a particular brand on this channel and I'll bring it up again, it's Sleep and Glow. Sleep and Glow has actually done um, a really nice job with their beauty pillows. I talked about their Aula pillow before and right now I wanna show you their Omnia pillow. So this is Sleep and Glow's Omnia pillow right here. I was gifted this by Sleep and Glow. Very nice of them to send me this. My wife and I both like this pillow a lot. We had to fight over this for sure. But the nice thing about this, if you're a side sleeper, um, is that it cradles the side of your face. So this is something I recommend if you wanna help with sleep wrinkles. And you know, a lot of times when you do filler on patients, you might see asymmetry and you might see um, loss of, of subcutaneous or bone on one side of the face might be promoted by laying on one side of your face. So if you're predominantly right side of your face sleeper, I might have to put more dermal filler on the right side for you. That doesn't always happen, but that's something I might ask people um, when they come in for filler. If I see some asymmetry, I might ask, hey, are you a left side sleeper? And you know, sometimes it is true or not, but you know, for um, there are studies that show that sleep wrinkles are real. The only downside to these beauty pillows is they're a little pricey. So if you do have some um, money to spend and you want to look into a beauty pillow, I'll leave a link and code down below if you're looking for a beauty pillow. A lot of our collagen uh, production happens overnight. So that's where I also like having a retinoid on at night and going to sleep and having a nice sound sleep. If you want to have uninterrupted sleep as much as possible, you want a pillowcase that's breathable where you're not going to be um, having bacteria get into your, your face and your pores. You want a nice pillow that will allow you to sleep well because you want at least seven hours of sleep. If you're sleep deprived, you definitely will wake up with those dark circles in your face. I just feel like I, I feel more raggedy the next morning. I feel like my wrinkles are more pronounced the next morning if I'm not sleeping well. So you definitely wanna shoot for seven hours of sleep. I know that's super hard for us parents who are working, but try your best to prioritize sleep. Sleep has many benefits health-wise in general, your blood pressure, you know, um, risk for dementia and such. So try to prioritize sleep. That's huge for collagen production. Today I went for a three mile run. The other thing I wanna talk about is exercise. They have found that exercise can help with collagen turnover and increasing collagen production. So those two lifestyle changes, increase sleep and exercise. Oh, and diet, very important for collagen. So making sure you have a good protein uh, diet, well balanced. Going into collagen supplements, is it worth it? Well, I'll say that there are no real big downsides besides price. When I looked at the studies, people have complained of GI upset bloating, but I haven't seen any real dangers with taking collagen supplements. The data is mixed, okay? So there's um, a lot of these companies, the manufacturers of collagen supplements do fund uh, these studies that do say that it helps with uh, anti-aging purposes when you take it regularly. But though it's, that's biased, of course, right? So we're gonna need more studies, larger studies, that will help um, us understand by taking collagen, does it get broken down into peptides and does it go into our bloodstream and increase collagen stores in our skin? There was a meta-analysis recently that was released um, that did show that collagen that you take, you ingest can be found in the bloodstream, which is pretty awesome. Then that, that is favorable towards the pro-collagen supplementers. I have to look and see if those studies that they looked at, the meta-analysis is compiling different studies, were they not biased, were they funded by these manufacturers? Um, but the other thing is a lot of these studies have promised or have said, claimed that they see increased collagen within just a few weeks, which is realistically not possible either. So that also makes me scratch my head and think, 
Is this just better hydration? So I have seen studies show that collagen supplementation can increase hyaluronic acid content in your skin, that you're gonna have increased hyaluronic acid production, therefore increasing um, the water retention in your skin so you're more hydrated and therefore plump up your skin. And by plumping up the skin, you're gonna have less fine lines and wrinkles. So that might be what's happening, but I definitely wanna go comb through the literature more. I'm not gonna routinely um, recommend it for my patients or for myself for now, but we'll stay tuned. We'll see if it's truly possible to ingest collagen, have it broken down in your stomach and, and absorb through your, your GI tract and go into the bloodstream, go to your skin, increase um, collagen thickness. Um, so there's that, okay guys? So I'm not gonna be drinking the collagen lattes just yet. In terms of the, uh, the next morning, I'm gonna uh, show you tomorrow morning what I do in the morning to help with collagen uh, production or preserving your collagen stores. So good night guys, see you tomorrow. I hope you guys all had seven hours of sleep. I hope that you're doing well today. I say in the mornings, have a nice routine that's simple because you wanna get your kids all ready and out the door and you wanna be ready for work. Great mindset. Going back to collagen, a nice active ingredient I like to apply after cleansing my face would be a vitamin C serum or a vitamin C cream. I've talked about vitamin C serums a lot here and on my other channels and also vitamin C creams. Brands that I would recommend would be Dermatology's CE Ferulic, which is a nice dupe of SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic. I have a link down below to find this guy here. Great one. I'll be doing a formal review on this soon, but I've been using this for many, many months and actually hasn't oxidized on me. I keep it in a dark, cool place. Another nice dupe for SkinCeuticals is Maylove's The Glow Maker, which I have to do another review on as well. Keep this in a very dark place in the box still. Great brand, Maylove has actually done some uh, done a great job. I have to talk about their retinol, the retinaldehyde, and the retinol. So that's another one here. Okay, a new favorite serum has been Naturium's Vitamin C Complex Serum. I really like this one a lot, so I'm going to put this one on today. So just a small amount. Nice pump there, give you that amount. Comes in an airtight pump as you just saw, if you don't like a dropper. I just instantly fell in love with this one because it just glides on so well, melts into the skin, doesn't pill at all. So if you wanna put your makeup or sunscreen over this, no issues layering stuff over it. So I have to do a review on this guy. So vitamin C, why do we apply vitamin C? Vitamin C's I like to apply in the morning. You can apply it morning and night, but morning time is great because I don't wanna have it interfere with my retinoid and cause increased irritation. So the most active ingredient of vitamin C is ascorbic acid, but the downside is that's very unstable, it's sensitive to pH, light, heat. So you wanna store these in a nice cool place in the drawer of my counter. Some people have skincare fridges, Fine if you have that, I don't think it's completely necessary, but if you do want to splurge in a skincare fridge, you can um, keep these stored in there. But the nice thing about a vitamin C serum is that it's an antioxidant. Vitamin C is an antioxidant, and if you have vitamins E and ferulic acid paired with it, it increases the potency and it also increases the stability of the vitamins to help block out the damaging effects of free radicals. Free radical damage can cause oxidative stress in our skin, and where do these free radicals come from? It's from sunlight, UV radiation on us all throughout the day, pollution, tobacco, smoke, all that nasty stuff you are exposed to as soon as you step out the door. You wanna protect yourselves from that with vitamin C serums. I started this in my 30s. Pretty much when I started social media is when I started using it consistently. I've always known that it's helpful, but did I really believe in it? Was I actually motivated enough to incorporate that into my schedule with two very young kids. Um, there, there was no way in this world I was gonna apply a vitamin C serum in the morning uh, with having very little sleep. Collagen production was the last thing on my mind at that point. But now that I'm in social media, people ask me to review things. I am, my kids are older, much uh, more independent. I'm gonna be using a vitamin C serum. I'm so glad I incorporated it because it really helped with dark spots 
but I feel like it's definitely given my skin a little bit more of a youthful rejuvenated boost and I thank it for it. So um, I'll be talking more about vitamin C serums on this channel, but real quick, just vitamin C serums do not replace sunscreen. Sunscreen is still necessary on top of it. Okay, so by blocking out the free radicals that can cause aging to our skin, that's a huge plus in preserving our collagen stores. But also there are studies that show that ascorbic acid can increase collagen production, um, which, is, which is nice, that's great. And, and vitamin C is a part of collagen synthesis, collagen cross-linking. So it does make sense that it would influence collagen um, production, but the big question is the ascorbic acid uh, ingredient in these creams or serums, do they truly go down the dermis and help uh, with collagen production? That's the big question. In terms of the newer derivatives, the things that aren't truly ascorbic acid, there are new formulations coming out of vitamin C that hopefully will stay very stable, penetrate the second layer of your skin, and help with collagen production. So, Naturium is onto something. Uh, they are trying to make, add things to keep vitamin C stable so it can go to the second layer and work its magic. Sunscreen, going to sunscreen next. Sunscreen is so important in preserving collagen. So you would follow up with a sunscreen over your vitamin C serum. You could moisturize first and then apply a sunscreen if you're dry, but you really could just put your sunscreen over your serum because um, a lot of sunscreens are moisturizing. I like La Roche-Posay uh, sunscreen uh, quite a bit, as you guys know, and that's my go-to, but I've, so I've recently liked MD Solar Sciences, uh, which is a great brand, water-resistant options that are mineral. And so that's how I'll end the morning routine and then go out the door with my coffee. I'm having a great time with you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Hope this video was helpful. I know this was a little bit longer, but I wanted to cover this complex um, and important uh, topic for sure. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Please let me know if you uh, do like uh, collagen supplements. I don't wanna say it's, uh, it's evil or it's bad, but we need more research. I know there are people who say it's worked for their hair, their nails, their joints. That's huge, but for skin, anti-aging purposes, I wanna see larger studies. Um, I'm gonna comb through that meta-analysis that was released recently a little bit further and hopefully give you guys an update, okay? Take care, guys. Have a nice day. Peace.